Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. So as we know, Joe Biden has always painted himself as a sort of moderate Democrat, you know, the uh, sensible alternative to the progressives and self-proclaimed democratic socialists within the party. Certainly, that's kind of how he ended up running in the first place. You know, when Bernie Sanders seemed like the most popular nominee among the noisy, but the Democratic establishment knew that while he was popular among young people, someone who calls themselves a socialist simply could not win a US election. Despite what we see and hear in popular culture, most Americans do not like socialism, especially older Americans, and of course, a lot of immigrants in states like Florida who came to America specifically to flee socialist regimes. Hence the fact they kind of snuck Joe Biden into the race and after he clinched the nomination they eventually snuck him into the White House with the promise that he would restore a bit of normality to politics and to the presidency. Which was not hard for enough of the general public to believe, given how the vast majority of the mainstream media had falsely portrayed Donald Trump for the preceding four years. However, those of us who have been paying attention to both sides of the story, which was quite a lot of people, by the way, given the fact that about 74 million people voted for Donald Trump, a record number of votes for an incumbent president, will know that Biden had no intention of being a moderate. Of course, he was always going to cave to the so-called progressive wing of the party more often than is seemly. This became very evident at the start of this year with the suite of executive orders he signed, most notably the deceptively titled Executive Order on Preventing and Combating Discrimination on the Basis of Gender Identity or Sexual Orientation. Talk about double speak. The order stated, Every person should be treated with respect and dignity and should be able to live without fear, no matter who they are or whom they love. Children should be able to learn without worrying about whether they will be denied access to the restroom, the locker room, or school sports. This might sound innocuous, but what it actually does is remove the distinction between gender and biological sex. In this context, preventing and combating discrimination on the basis of gender identity specifically means that people may enter individually male and female spaces or compete in single sex sports regardless of whether they're male or female if they identify as a particular gender. So in rudimentary terms, Somebody who is biologically male but self-identifies as a woman must be allowed to enter the women's locker room if they so desire, regardless of how male presenting they are, without having to provide any kind of proof or satisfy any qualification. Now for the record, I don't have any problem with trans women using the women's bathrooms so long as they are actually trans and there are many steps you can take, legal and physiological, in order to demonstrate that. The concern that I and others have when it comes to allowing people to self-identify as whatever gender they want with no qualification other than because I said so is that male predators will abuse those laws to enter women's spaces and harm the women within. And trust me, it happens. Google the names Karen White and Jessica Yaniv and also the We Spa incident. You'll see exactly what I mean. Anyway, this kind of policy is based in radical gender theory, which, again, in very rudimentary terms, is the theory that gender and biological sex are two different things and not dependent on each other. That is, gender is apparently a social construct based on a person's behavior and demeanor being influenced by social norms, whereas sex is dependent on chromosomes and biology. This belief is what justifies eroding the significance of biological sex in favor of gender identity, thus facilitating biological males justifiably apparently entering women's spaces on a whim. Confusing, definitely unsustainable, but hey, this is 2021 and there it is signed into an executive order by a supposedly moderate president. However, there is actually a step further than distinguishing between gender and biological sex, which has popped up in the last couple of years, pushed by the ultra-woke, extreme radical gender theory lobby. This is, oddly enough, distinguishing between gender and sex by insisting the two are indistinguishable. Yeah, I know, it, it sounds really weird coming out of my mouth, but l look, let me explain. Initially, the ultra-woke tried to insist that biological sex, same as they do with gender, is actually a spectrum, citing the existence of intersex people, so people who have both XX and XY chromosomes. For example, Olympian runner Custis Semenya. Also, if you've made it this far through this video, you must like my content a little bit, so if you like this content, why don't you subscribe to my second channel for more of my content. It's called Daisy and it is my fun, 
silly, sometimes totally non-political channel where I will discuss everything from, you know, life updates to film and book reviews to historical profile videos, you look to, to even ghost stories. I've got that up there. Uh, the link to my second channel is in the video description. It is also in the pinned comment. Please, please like and subscribe and watch the latest video on that channel. That link is also in the video description and the pinned comment. I would really, really love to have you there. We are just having so much fun. However, a tiny minority of genetic outliers do not a spectrum make, especially as intersex people are not a third sex. If they were a third sex, then they would have a, a totally different third set of chromosomes, different from XX and XY. As such, when that argument very quickly started to fall apart under scrutiny, the ultra-work gender lobby switched tactics, insisting that to say someone is, say, biologically female is false because... Look, I'm actually having trouble explaining it to you because it is so niche. I've actually racked my brain how to communicate this, but look, I guess maybe the simplest way to explain it is that it's the notion that if you identify as a man or a woman, then that makes you biologically the sex related to that gender because you say so. Essentially, it's this. As a transgender woman, I am biologically female. That's really the best I can do for you at this point in terms of an explana explanation. It has stumped even me. But it is relevant because given recent events, the Biden administration has actually upped their level of woke extremism from the stock standard gender identity is more important than biological sex of the executive order at the start of the year to quite literally trans women, that is, biological males who, thanks to a condition called gender dysphoria, creating an intense sense of discomfort with the gender they appear as and thus manage that gender dysphoria by taking steps to appear and live as women, are biologically female because they just are. Now many of you will know that a certain trans woman named Rachel Levine, formerly Richard Levine, who was appointed by Joe Biden as Assistant Secretary for Health, well, she was recently given the title of four-star admiral in the United States Public Health Service Commissioned Corps, all of which would have been totally fine had it not been for the way the decision was announced. When the statement about Rachel Levine's appointment to admiral was released by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, it started off innocuously but soon became a bit of a head-scratcher. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services publicly announced today the nation's first openly transgender four-star officer across any of the eight uniformed services of the United States. Admiral Levine now serves as the highest-ranking official in the USPHS Commission Corps and its first ever female four-star admiral. I'm sorry. What? What? What the f Hang on. Female? Rachel Levine isn't female. She's a biological male who transitioned to and now lives as a woman to, imagine, to manage her gender dysphoria. If she were female, she wouldn't be trans. She'd be, you know, female. Now, look, you'd think this blatantly, gratuitously incorrect statement would be relegated to just the Department of Health and Human Services, right? I mean, look, given the direction the various bureaucratic departments have been heading, it shouldn't really surprise anyone that, look, at least one department is going down the ultra-work route. Only it wasn't just the Department of Health that made this statement. It also came from the highest office in the land the White House. Today, Dr. Rachel Levine was sworn in as the first four-star female officer in the U.S. Public Health Service Commission Corps and the first transgender four-star officer in U.S. history in any of the eight U.S. uniformed services. Oh my god, the same blatantly, gratuitously false statement from none other than the White House. And then, of course, the media just parroted it. Levine is the first openly transgender four-star officer and first female four-star admiral of the USPHS Commission Corps. Dr. Rachel Levine was sworn in as the first female four-star admiral in the history of the US Public Health Service Commission Corps. Levine's appointment to the USPHS Commission Corps also made her the organization's first female four-star admiral. Levine is also the organization's first ever female four-star admiral. Like I said, this assertion that because someone says they are a woman means they are female is about the most extreme stance you can possibly take when it comes to radical gender theory. 
It is an incredibly niche stance. It only seemed to come to the fore when the argument that intersex equaled biological sex is a spectrum fell apart. And as you saw earlier, it is so niche and so ultra work that even I have trouble explaining the reasoning behind it. And generally I am very much across all the work concepts. Now, when I initially tweeted about this, I had a number of replies to the effect of, but Daisy, this doesn't affect you directly, so why do you care about it? That is about the dumbest, flimsiest, laziest argument you can possibly make about anything. Everyone cares about stuff that doesn't directly affect them. And I reckon if you asked those people who said that to me whether they cared about things like Palestine, refugees, and, you know, people electing not to get vaccinated for COVID, none of which directly affects them, they give you the kind of answer that indicates they do care very, very much about these things that have no direct effect on them. Seriously. Second of all, the highest office in the land willfully conflating gender and biological sex affects everyone because, as I mentioned earlier in the video, it is a slippery, dippery slope to enabling predators to take advantage of women in women's spaces. And look, again, for the record, I'm not saying trans women are predators, not at all. This actually has nothing to do with trans women. It's to do with predatory men exploiting the self-identification laws that inevitably flow from this ideology under the guise of not identifying as men so they can enter women's spaces. I don't know how much clearer I need to be than that. And look, again, as I mentioned earlier, Bad things really do stem from this. In addition to the examples I gave at the start of this video, a really recent example is what's currently going on in Ladoon County, Virginia, where a school is being accused of covering up the alleged sexual assault of a 15-year-old girl in the girl's bathroom by a boy wearing a skirt who was allowed into the girl's bathroom because he claimed to be gender fluid. That same boy was later arrested for another sexual assault and is currently in juvenile detention. And I guarantee you, as these policies become more and more widespread, there will be many more instances like that. This is a dangerous path for the USA and any country to go down. It's no longer relegated to woke universities and try-hard corporations. This is the most powerful office in the world, the US executive branch, facilitating and legitimizing this stuff. And we should all be very, very worried about it. If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment. And if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my subscribe star link and other ways you can support me.